Hello America, welcome back for another installment uh, with LandlordsJournal.com. Um, you have your four usual suspects here, and today we are going to be um, talking about uh, foreclosures. Um, foreclosures, that's a, that is, that was a word for 2009, 2010. It was 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yeah. 12, 13, 14. <laughs> yeah. It was on the news every night, uh, foreclosures, foreclosures. So what is a foreclosure? Exactly, what is a foreclosure? Basically, it's when you don't pay your mortgage and the bank's coming after you, right? The bank yes. forecloses bank. against your home. Uh, they have a lien takes, on it. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they take ownership of your home. Right. After a grace period, they'll, they'll usually give you a few months, uh, but then they'll say enough's enough. And you have a deadline, and if you don't meet that deadline, they take possession and you move out. Yeah, we're 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 talking about foreclosures from an investor's point of view, but if you happen to be look, viewing this from um, a homeowner's point of view, um, it's best to not let it get to that point. Work with the bank, you know, especially now they're a lot more um, lenient and mm -hmm. maybe not as much lenient, but more they're w w willing to work with you more than if you just ignore the problem and let it go away and just you know. Um, let it go by the wayside. So work, if you're listening from this from a homeowner's point of view, work with your bank um, and, and, and try to work it out. But um, sometimes it's hopeless and um, you, there's nothing you can do and the two can't um, come to a resolution and that's where <coughs> um, we come in. That's you where know, real estate investors come in and, mm -hmm. and could help. Not all. We can't help all the time but it has to be mutually beneficial. And that's kind of more of a pre-foreclosure. If, if you're involved and your home is about to be foreclosed, that's what's called a pre-foreclosure, which is different a different animal the what, than a technical right. foreclosure, which is what we want to touch it's on It's already today. happened. Right. Right. So, and I think we want to talk about pre-foreclosures on a different a different show. That's, that's different information, and I don't want to confuse the two. You know, I think it's easy, right. easy to confuse the two. Right. So I, I think from personally... What we need to talk about is foreclosure for our purposes today is after the bank has taken possession. The homeowner is no longer in the in the picture. Right, and in that case, you won't be listening to this. Yeah, so this right? is more for investors today, right. this program. Um, let me throw out a question. How do you find foreclosures? How If somebody who doesn't know how to find foreclosures and they, they would like to try their hand at one, how, how would you go about even locating foreclosures? What are, let's talk about some ways to do that. Um, the easiest way, of course, which is not necessarily the best way, but the easiest way is through real estate agent. A lot of times they won't. That's how we found out. Well, actually, we found one of ours. The last one we purchased, the last mm -hmm. one we purchased uh, through a real estate agent, was a foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, previous to previous to that, a short sale that we did, we found out from some of our mailings, and we just <laughs> happened to stumble into it. It was actually a pre-foreclosure. Pre it was a pre-foreclosure. Mm -hmm. It hadn't actually gone into foreclosure, but. A lot of people um, do mailings. How do they do the mailings, Bob? Do they find it? What do they? What, how do well, they? Well, there are sites. There are websites that'll give you the, that information. And there some like, there are there are HUD foreclosures, and they have um, they have a website for those kinds of things. And a lot of times they they won't go into the they won't go into real estate companies' hands. They'll go into a like an auction house, mm -hmm. and we've looked at some of those. Um, through an auction house, we've seen some of those that, that go through an auction really, even online. It even. doesn't apply very well here. I think they don't get what they expect here. Yeah. I think that we're so remote and they're so, these companies are so out of touch that I don't, I don't think it works out very well for them. I but think in a small town like ours, maybe a good way to find out about foreclosures is to to call the local banks and ask to talk right. with That's another one they, but let's talk let's stick with real estate find out who the REO uh, just ask a, what if they have a list of their REO properties which is uh, real estate owned REO is mm -hmm. is what the, is the bank lingo for a property they've been they've and I, I think there are on. pros and cons to that um, you know, real estate also REO because if you if you go to an agent, the way I see it, um, an agent there's a there's good and there's bad. The bad is that you are going to probably pay higher closing costs. There are going to be more fees associated with that. However, if you have a good relationship with a um, a realty company, which is what we're trying to establish 
with, with kind of one in mind, then they might bring you the choosiest pieces. I mean, they mm -hmm. know they want that closing, you know, mm -hmm. so they're working for you for mm -hmm. that closing fee to get paid. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping you're going to buy, so they're going to take you this pretty little nice carrot and say, hmm, look what I found for you. Here's a nice foreclosure, which is mm -hmm. actually what happened with Norwood. They, they knew what we were kind of looking for as well. So I think an agent can be your friend um, in that they will go out and bird dog for you and, and find good, good properties. Bad side again, though, is that you will have to pay some closing fees, but it may be worth it in the long run if you get a nice piece of property. Right. And then the REO, um, I think that's good, but you you can cut out some of those fees because you may not have to may not have to deal directly with an agent, correct? Right. So, but you may not get a as choosy a piece of property. They may have just pieces of crap. Right. <laughs> and we like working. We around. like working with brokers. We don't mm -hmm. like working with um, the the agents. I mean, we will work with an agent, but we prefer to work with a broker because a broker gets to keep the entire fee themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't have to split it, you know, whatever they give their agent or whatever. Um, so in, a broker has more of an incentive, um, I feel, we feel, or I feel, um, to make a deal quicker because they get their money faster. They get to keep the entire amount. Yeah. Like, like on the property that we just purchased, he got to the broker because he was a, the broker. He got to keep the entire amount and didn't have to split it with the right, his with the with his agent or so the other it. bank. So if that. you can find a real estate company that deals in um, foreclosures, they don't have to split the fee. Like if say we got we had our own real estate agent and it was another per, another real estate company that had the listing. They'd have to split the fee, usually 50-50 mm -hmm. or whatever it is, and then they have to pay their agent. So it's, you know, it's divvied up, you know, two or three different times. But if you can find a broker who deals in foreclosures and you can uh, establish a relationship with them and they bring you, you know, what they have to the table, you know, then they're more inclined to make a deal. They keep all the money and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times you can get a better deal that way, I think. Uh, so that's why we like to work with brokers that have um, that have the foreclosures that they get them themselves. You know, once you start having to divvy it up, then they're not as it's not as important to them. I don't right. think to you're make a deal. The they're low, you're lower on the totem More pole. The but if they're if they get the entire commission, they it's an advantage to you. They're going to want to work with you more because they're getting the entire commit. They're getting the entire commission. So if we've purchased. Um, you know, three or four homes exclusively from this broker, you know, even on an inexpensive house, $35,000, they're making a couple thousand bucks. They're getting to keep that couple thousand bucks to themselves. Right. You know, if we do that three times in the course of a couple months, that's a lot of money, even, even at $35,000. And I'm not sure, but if it, it works this way everywhere, but locally we have seen that a lot of their foreclosures go to the same same agents, the same agencies, I should say, mm -hmm. the same realtors. So that that happens. That That's the one we just lot. purchased from. He gets quite a few from the same bank, mm -hmm. so that when that same bank forecloses on someone, they give it to them. So he has an inventory of you it's know. About relations, it's about establishing relationships. Exactly, it's about establishing relationships. And it's like a two tier there. So this bank wants to get rid of properties because they're not in the business of holding properties. Banks don't like foreclosures. I mean, that's that's not really a secret. That doesn't make them money. They want to get rid of them. So they find agents that can get rid of those problems for them. They establish a relationship with that those agents that have right. proven track records. Those agents then want the commission from that property. So the next phase is they find those investors that are willing to make those problems go away. So the agents are kind of the middleman um, in there. And you want to you want to be able to close quickly. You want to be able to pay cash or be able to close quickly. Whether that's paying cash or already have, already be pre-approved for a mortgage or whatever. They don't want people. You know, time is money. Mm -hmm. If you go in there and sign a contract on a house and it's going to take you two or three months to close to get the money, you're not in a very good position to make a deal. You know, if you can go in there and make an all-cash deal, you know, for X amount of dollars and can close in a week or you know as soon as possible. You're in a much better position than someone that says, "Oh, I gotta get financing. I gotta go to the bank. Blah 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 blah." You're in a much better position. So they might have two offers on the table, one for the same amount, one for you know a little less, 
but this person can close today. They have the money today mm -hmm. versus someone that might drag it out for three or four months, which we've experienced before. Um, or, we're in a much better bargaining position when you have cash. In hand. And so something I want to talk about later as a way to get that, a way to close quickly and to make deals, whether we find something from from a real estate company or you know on our own or whatever, um, is using hard money, and that's beyond the scope of this discussion today. But sometime in the future, um, I want to discuss um, using hard money to be able to close quickly because cash talks. You know, would you rather take uh, like if you're buying, if you're selling this table, would you take a hundred dollars from me right now? Or 150 from somebody that might be able to have it, might not have it a month from now. You know, what are you going to do? Banks typically want to close quickly, and as long as your offer is reasonable mm -hmm. and within their expectations, they're going to take the person, the person's money that can close today, versus someone that's going to give them a little more, but going down the road. Um, it's the same thing with foreclosures. So using hard money, um, you can close quickly. And hard money is usually between uh, six to nine months. Hard money lenders will usually lend you the money for six to nine months, possibly up to a year. And then it gives you enough time, you know, to, uh, you know, go to a bank and say, hey, I want to pay this off, this hard money lender off. Gives you enough time, gives you enough leeway. Like in our worst case scenario, it takes us four months to get a loan from a bank. So with a hard money lender, it takes us nine months to a year. We take that money, pay them off, and just, you know, continue the process so you're in a much 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 better uh, bargaining you're, you're in a much better position to buy property when you can pay cash and that's one way to do it um, when you know you're going to get the money you know, it takes it's a lengthy process to get money uh, money from a bank um, so if whether you're going to refinance or whatever it's a good way to get the money and then pay it off six months to a year later you don't use hard money as a long-term solution it's a short-term solution only I think brokers are also advantageous um, in that they can run interference for you with the bank. Um, if you have a good relationship established with your broker, um, you can talk about how much you're willing to offer this or that, and if they're working for you, they won't hesitate to go to the bank with that offer, even if it's crazy. Right. Because your goal as an investor is to pay under, <laughs> to pay as low as pro possible for that property. Um, because if it is a foreclosure, I'm telling you right now, we have learned the hard way there's going to be cost to get that property up online to be rented. And you can almost, whatever you estimate, double it. There's holding okay. costs. Um, there, there's always costs. And so you want to get it at a minimum, and so your broker should work for you. Remember, they're getting a commission regardless. So they're not, they're not there to judge you or judge your price, you know, with the bank. But if you don't have, if you have another job, you know, maybe you don't have time to stay on top of it, you know, with the bank, you need somebody that's in your corner that's going to be an advocate for you and not the bank. I have a question. I I don't know if I don't know if uh, if uh, we know the answer to this or not. But when a bank offers a real estate owned property, do they own the property outright themselves? Can you assume that they own the property outright themselves? Say if you had a <clears throat> if you were a homeowner that had um, a second mortgage on a place mm -hmm. and the bank foreclosed on there on your property and there was a second mortgage right. out there does the bank no. before the bank offers it for sale do is that reconcile is all that right I don't think it is I think they're foreclosing on their portion they're of a it. portion of it yeah they are but that's in order to, when they insurance. sell it that's why you do when they sell insurance. it that's why they give you a warranty deed is to say that as of this time nobody else owns it mm -hmm. right or a portion of it because we could have a lien on it we could have a mechanics lien we could have a we could, they could have went and refinanced it mm -hmm. and then it, from another bank even and have like a twenty thousand dollar line of credit out on it that they would have so they'd be in the second position what does that warranty deed? What does that warranty deed tell you? Does it tell you that the second mortgage has been reconciled? No. It, well, or what has it, been, you know, if there was one? Was yeah. Second. What it says is that we we're not going to take the time. A general warranty deed means that we're not going to take the time to to research it. We've we've done a limited research. We own it. We guarantee that if something does come up. You you're protected. Mm -hmm. That if there is a second That's out there, claim. that they are go they will they will um, mm -hmm. pay the. And I, I can't say whether well they'll pay it or whether they'll 
whether you get your I think it has to do with the amount yeah so what what action they would take mm -hmm. um, but the warrant the deed that we got this time was a limited warranty deed which did not protect us the way we wanted to be protected so we did a title search in addition to that and that which is, we paid for yes we did and so that's what you may have to do yeah you may still have to, have to do money because I was yeah, very concerned about that. Just like yeah. as if you were doing it, right. buying it from right. Right. an individual. And when you pay cash for something, you know, usually when you get a mortgage, that's required. Right. You got to do a title search, to have title insurance, right. and so on and so forth. Yeah. But if you're paying, let's like, say you had, you know, thirteen thousand dollars saved up, and you want to go, you find this awesome deal on a foreclosure, and you paid cash thirteen thousand dollars, you know, for a house. Make sure mm -hmm. that you get title uh, do a title search and get title insurance because what could happen is there might be several liens on that property everything from a mechanics lien you uh, know we didn't bank get lien. title insurance well oh, huh well on this on this one we didn't did we i don't we did not we, we did don't not. have title insurance on no we've always gotten title insurance in the past nope we haven't nope we did a title search though, and it came back search. clean right, right. that's so my did not get insurance get my insurance. point of it my point being we the title came back clean. We didn't go in hoping for the best, did we? And I thought, to my knowledge, mm -hmm. we didn't. Did we? No, no, okay. no, no, no. We, just we didn't go in hoping for the best. We got a clean bill of health. We got a clean bill of health, attorney. but we did not get title insurance. Um, depending on the cost, I would recommend getting title insurance. But that's a whole other discussion. But most definitely do a title search because you purchased this thirteen thousand dollar property. Like I said, um, you could there could be liens on the property. There could be tax liens. You know, any mechanics liens, or liens from a bank, you're responsible for them as the new owner. Right. If you they do a title disappear. search and it comes back clean, then what does the title insurance do for you? It means that if they screwed up somehow, that they pay for it. That if the title search, if your attorney well, if there was some, up. something missed on the title search. If they were not right. thorough enough. If they missed something, okay. then they'd pay for it. Because you're so. taking their word that the title search was... Cool. It's kind of crazy to me. Yeah. yeah you think crazy. that... That would be a. That is the a, insurance. That is the. You, exactly. That is the verification. You would think that that would be in yeah. malfeasance if you right. didn't. If you right. did something. You could yeah. sue them. <laughs> exactly. You but I, I, apparently that's not the case because otherwise no one would do a title search. You would just buy title insurance. Mm -hmm. Right. Or is it a fear thing, or is it something that they make you think you have to have like a greeting card for whatever <laughs> you know, like the greeting? Right. Card that's a good question. Is. You have to have greeting cards for this because it's a national holiday. Well, is this one of those things? I right, but title insurance, that's another discussion. But if yeah. anything, get a title search. Absolutely. You don't want to buy a property. Because if you're paying cash for one, you're not required to have one. If you have, if you get a mortgage, of course, you're, you're required to have one. The bank will require it. But if you're paying cash for a property, the real estate the real estate person, if, if they're a good one, they will. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of times, from my experience, they won't even mention the fact that, oh, you better check to make, you better get some, you know, a title check to make sure this is okay. But in most cases, this may or may not be true, Don't do the banks already do that? Because we've asked... Well, is the title free and clear? And it seems like the banks had already done a search because they wanted to maybe reconcile those second. And Absolutely, thirds. and I think that's generally going to be the yeah. the case. I'm not I'm not certain about that. I've I'm not certain either. I, I think, think it's something we have think to. That, I think it I probably depends, but yeah. we. I ask, think you always want to. I think you would always. I think you would always want to check, but I think in general, mm -hmm. everyone that we've encountered, in you know, looking. It. If it it would it was like I think well, we I've asked talked, our broker and, and I would think there's a question. there's a very good chance that a lot of the foreclosures are going to have other liens. Yeah, that's. More I think that's not. Yeah, a, I don't. I'd say it's more common than not. I may be wrong. I, I don't and know there that. are situations I've heard in the forums and from talking to real estate agents that work with investors that people have bought property, taking a chance. So yeah. this is not. I mean, this is. More it's a real concern. Than, it's a real concern. That they've been responsible for fifty th thousands and thousands of dollars worth of liens, mm -hmm. and they end up, you know, in the hole instead of thinking instead of being ahead. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I can, if there's any advice to be given, it is if you're paying cash for a property, get a title search. If you're getting a mortgage, they will require that anyway. But if you're paying cash for a property, um, no matter how much it is, I mean, there's properties out there you can get for ten, twelve thousand dollars. We've bought them before. Well, let me ask this question. This is this is a more advanced concept even I mean for us but we did learn about this we did talk about this it's a uh, thing we went to in Las Vegas for years ago are there times when you go into a situation and you buy a foreclosure knowing that there is a second lien 
I mean, isn't aren't there times depending on how the money falls that that sure. is? Sure, I would think right. that. that is, I think it's a possibility. That is a possibility. You know that, that it's, you it's got ten thousand dollar yes. lien on it, and you have to pay that off. But yeah, I think so. Because the primary lien holder, they just want to satisfy that amount, and that's right. all they care about. Well, right. ask me this. Uh, answer me this. Uh, I'm just I'm brainstorming here a little bit, but until you need to sell it, or until you need to finance it. You may not have to do anything with that lien. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I'm asking. Until you I'm sell not selling. It. Yeah, when you sell it, all the liens have to be released. It's just we bought a there. house that had a mechanics lien for from a carpet company that was a few thousand dollars, which I'm not sure how that happened. Okay. But it had to be paid before. That's you know, a mortgage the, the requirement. Was, it's, a, a mortgage it's a mortgage because yeah. we, we, well, there's a mortgage on it. But if you pay cash and rent. Right. You could just let it hang. Well, I'm at, I don't know if that's the case, but how could they what make could how they could they, they how what, what could, could they, they do, do on it? What could, can they foreclose on that second? Can you foreclose? I think they that's, can. That's, that's the question. question. They they if you have a lien on it, they can foreclose on it. And that's what a lot of these scams, ah. these scams so come into play. So that goes to the prime, if they become primary then. If the primary has been satisfied, second moves up to primary, right? Well, that, if that is, that's yeah, horrible. I think, I think that that, is horrible. That's why they have to be taken care of because they can foreclose. Any of the... Any of the lien holders can f foreclose on it. It can cause you trouble. Yeah. Like uh, if I put a lien, if I put, if I did, a, if you did a subject to, like you know, we've talked about this before, and this is beyond the scope mm -hmm. of this again. But if I did a subject to on your home here, mm -hmm. I own your home. Right. It's not even a lien. I own it. But say I put like a mechanics lien. I did some work for you. Blah 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 blah. I went to um, the courthouse. And, and put a mechanics lien. I can foreclose on that lien, and you could, unless you pay me, mm -hmm. you're going to lose your home. But I guess my question was like going into it knowing you would have to reconcile those liens. Like if you had a thousand dollar mechanics and you're willing to pay that, right? Some people can't pay that. Some people but can't. But if you're like, oh yeah, that's not a problem. I'll settle that lien. Yeah. You know, because this is an incredible deal that we're getting this. The, it, they're foreclosing. I'm only going to have to pay five thousand dollars on this property or whatever. You know, hell, I'm right. willing to pay. And you can use that to you can, yeah, and you can use that to your advantage to say, hey, right. I'll pay off all these liens. Yes, and you'll that's be free and clear from. It? Yeah, it's, it, it could be a bargaining chip. It could, you could, mm -hmm. you could be put in your. I mean, it, the ball could be in your court. You can pay all that crap off and and be done with it. So that's there. that's all the more reason why title search is so important to know what are the liens and what are their amounts mm -hmm. and like what's their status. And what's you can't second, third. Yeah, fourth? and you can't take the homeowner's word for it. Oh gosh. No. I mean, if you find a property that you're interested <laughs> in and they say, oh yeah, I have this, that, this, that, this, that, they could have some kind of mechanics lien on there that, they're, that they forgot about from years ago. Maybe they but, don't even know about it. Right. I mean, that's possible as well. Yeah, and you need, to, you need to establish a relationship with... First of all, you need to learn how to do it yourself, for one. You can go down to the courthouse and do this yourself as a preliminary. You know, but before you close, you want to have a, a professional do it. But um, I would do it... Well, we've done some... Just as a preliminary some preliminary research just to see if there's anything on there but mm -hmm. I mean you might want to do that but you never ever want to take you know the homeowner's word for it that the, all they have is this you know X Y or Z because they could have you know the whole alphabet in there but okay but yeah it's definitely a um, you can find some good deals I mean mm -hmm. we probably had we probably encountered uh, 20 or 30 percent discount on the, the last property that we bought a month ago, mm -hmm. so that's a substantial that's a substantial discount. What if we find? What if you find a foreclosure that you think is a great deal? However, you find one or two glaring problems with the property. What What are some options? How can you use that to your benefit, or should you even take it? Go to the bank and say, "Hey, I found this." You know, have an inspection done, which we didn't we didn't do the last time. A lot of times the inspection will pay for itself because you'll it's, it's it's a negotiating tool which we've used this before. Mm -hmm. We've had an inspection to use it as a negotiating tool. You could so, do your own inspection too. It, well, yeah, and you can do your own it's inspection if you if thing. you found yeah. It doesn't you don't have to have a no? You don't have to have a formal, formal piece of paper, right. but a lot you know to the trained eye, and hopefully we'll get there one day. You'll you'll see it right off the bat. A lot better bat. than we used to. You were a lot better than we used to be. But if you want like a third, an inspector's job are to find problems. You right. know. Their job is to find out what's wrong with the property. Well, there could be a code thing that we're not aware of. You exactly. Know, some, there are some, I mean, a glaring thing, but there may be, oh, you don't have enough outlets within six feet. I mean, yeah, there, there could, could be, be yeah. I mean, if, in, any, in any which way you decide to go, you can use it as a negotiating tool to, 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 mm -hmm. to drive the price down. But banks, if you're dealing directly with banks, they're 
probably not going to pay for you to have home inspection. You know, it's usually it's kind of as is. You know, it's foreclosure. It we want to dump this thing and move it's on. It's as is. But then it's also leverage, like you're saying. Right. You know, if there's yeah. Because again, you've got them over barrel a little bit because they want to dump this property because they're having to pay upkeep. The bank has to pay the taxes. You know, they're having to pay a real estate agent to advertise. Mm -hmm. So they're paying these expenses, you know, every month. So every month it's not selling and sitting on their books. It looks bad. Right. So, again, you have cash in hand. They might be willing to lower that price. Probably not fix it, but they might take less for it just to get rid of it. Right. And so don't be afraid. We've always said, and we learned this. I think this is very important. If it sticks in your throat when you give the, the amount, then that's the right amount. Yeah, be ashamed of your be offer. Be ashamed of your offer. You know, and find a broker who's willing to work. If you want to go the broker route, find a broker who's willing to offer that. Don't let your broker dictate what you offer for that property. Right. And we if, have fallen into trouble. Right. And if you if they don't if they don't do as you ask, find someone who then will. Then you find another one. They're they're dime a dozen. Right. I mean, you want to have a relationship, but that's where relationship comes in because we have a couple that you know know us, and they're not ashamed to make it stick in the throat. You have to train the people the way you do business. Yeah, I would train. Them. You train the people you do business the way you do business. Sometimes, sometimes you know they upset you or they, they mm -hmm. disappoint you or whatever. But if you it depends on how much you have invested in them. You know, if you have a lot of time and a lot of you know a lot of time and effort involved in training them, mm -hmm. you just they just don't do one thing and you're out of here. Depends on their, you know, it's a supply and demand. Um, don't be a motivated buyer. Don't be a motivated buyer, exactly. Um, not, and and we can, you can always walk. I mean, we've walked, you know, haven't we? So mm -hmm. like we've walked on some, like, oh, you yeah. know, that doesn't meet our quali bank doesn't meet our qualifications. This numbers aren't working for us. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, you know, we'll we'll go find another deal because they're everywhere right now. Right. So you can keep those on your books. And the foreclosures that we have found with Dentsy Real Estate Agents, they haven't mm -hmm. been. We haven't done any mailing campaigns. The mailing campaigns, have, no. I mean, they're they're throwing them at us. I mean, right. we, we get more offers than we have time to follow up. Oh yeah, we real yeah we don't, agents. we don't we have the yeah. time or money to follow up on them. But Our, that's my least favorite mode. It is, too. it is too. It is too. I don't like they're, that as well. They got their hands. But that's out. today's topic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Foreclosures are well. I, that's a good point. Yeah. We we have not researched the possibility of uh, of getting these before they're. Is it possible to get foreclosures before they're? Oh yeah, listed? you can do mail. Oh, that's yeah. pre foreclosure. No, that's I, no, mean, hold on. From the bank. All from the bank. From the bank. REO prior to because I, I had a discussion prior with a guy once yeah, on our I same there street. Is. Right there was. They, he did not want to use a real estate agent, right? Mm -hmm. And he loved selling his stuff, his his foreclosures. Yeah, pay those fees. Yeah. Prior to that, I think established. He was a different kind of. He's a different kind of banker, and he's not even he's not in this area anymore. But, um, it, I just wonder about. I wonder if there's many opportunities. You can You can call the R. You have to ask for the REO department. You know, establish your relationship, send them faxes. You know, mm -hmm. talk to them, find someone, whatever, mm -hmm. and establish your relationship. Cut out the image. Cut out the 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 middle guy. Have your cash in hand. Have your cash in hand. They're, they're going to be more willing to deal with exactly. you. Exactly. And that's I, why I, you like may you say, the relationship is important. Talk Even to the if, REO guy at your bank. Or, or like we we have like we're doing some other stuff with banks that doesn't include REO, but I'm sure she could get us a contact. Well, yeah, you know, and boom, you know, I think we'd be in the right if we wanted to. Especially we local, could be there. especially local, especially banks. local locals. Are Say good. hey, where we have this, and especially if they're making money off of you two ways. Yeah, you know, they're loaning, making money, yeah. loaning you money, and you're Closing buying their, their, their like crap. A HELOC, maybe you have a HELOC exactly. over here, and you have a mortgage on another exactly. property over here. Well, hey. Let's go to them. They're, you know, they're because the real estate agent, really you know, real estate agents have their place and brokers, but you know, yeah. they're middlemen. They are. So if you can cut out the middle guy, you know, I'm going to get, we're going to get heat for that. But if you go straight to the source, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times you can get better deals, you know, so on and so forth. Um, I'd say there's also, and I'm not, I think that's predominantly true, but I think there are also can be. When a bank has a good relationship with the with a broker, sometimes the broker can put the brakes on them, going thinking they've got more than they. Especially the, here's what the bank wants: the bank wants a hundred percent of their mortgage mm -hmm. that they're they foreclosed upon. So they want all their money back. A real estate a, a, a real estate broker can sometimes 
say, hey, I know you you owe that in order to get your money out, you've got this, but I'm just telling you, based on the market, you can only get this. Right. So, so I, I think there's there's potential that you can still do well with a with a broker, even though um, you're not you're you're paying seven percent, but it might be seven percent of a smaller number, which may not hurt as bad. In some in some sense in some instances, and Dewine does this. Um, she'll buy them in bulk. She'll go to a to a, a bank and say, I want to buy all your REOs. I want you to cut me the best bottom line deal, the best deal you can make me. And again, you got to have your ducks in a row. You got to get organized. You got to you know have your money lined cash. up. You have to have cash. And a lot of times the bank will. You can go to that bank and even do it mm -hmm. if you have your crap together. Go to the bank and say, Hey, I want to take all these off your hands. Give me the the bottom dollar. You know, work out a deal that way mm -hmm. and buy them in bulk. Um, and take them, take them all off their hands. And there are people who do that before they even get to the, yeah. to the real estate. And if you have the resources to do that, that's exactly what I would do. I would go to the bank, especially around here where the numbers are kind of small. Mm -hmm. Go to the bank and say, hey, especially like if you like, um, you know, us com combine our res resources together, we have a lot of purchasing power. Go to the bank and say, and it takes a lot of trust and all that kind of stuff which we have. Go to the bank and say, hey, we want to take all your all your uh, all your REOs it might be a million dollars worth, mm -hmm. but and it's a it's a big gamble, but you have you take them off their hands, you get a discount, and then you either you sell them, rent them, or whatever. But that's what Dewine does, and that's that's for another show too. But um, we're not we, quite there. We're not quite we're not quite there. Not close, even close. But we're we're um, on the way. Yeah, but the thing is, establish establish a, rel a relationship with a broker, real estate mm -hmm. company that that deals in that because there's they. Banks usually have a, a few that they work with um, exclusively, you know, I'm not, and, or, or establish a relationship with the REO, REO guy, most REO people, woman. I mean, most people, if you're an investor, you probably are in a house, you own your own house, you must have a mortgage with somebody. That might be a good first step if you want mm -hmm. to say, hmm, let me talk to my bank where my mortgage is, or, or the guy who sold me my house. Right. You know, that might be a good lead-in point of entry. Exactly. You know, or, that's where I would go. And in the case, or and you can do um, before it goes into foreclosure, pre foreclosure, which is another topic. You can do mailings and, and yeah, that that'll be a thing. juicier topic. Yeah, that'll be that's much more fun. But that's it for today. Is that it for today? Well, that I think sounds, is it done? Yeah, well, I think minutes. it is. I think it is a take. Mm -hmm. um, one of the one of the things that I've noticed with the foreclosure deals that we did is they happen fairly quickly. Mm -hmm, These mm -hmm. banks aren't aren't don't have the emotional um, um, attachment that a, that a homeowner does, mm -hmm. and they 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 they're also pains in the neck. Yeah, they've already th they've already evicted the people, so they yeah, they're gone. Yeah. The homeowner's not even in the but, picture. Uh, okay, America, um, that's uh, that's our take on uh, foreclosures from an investor. And, uh, uh, to landlordsjournal.com for some some uh, further topics in the, in the near future. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. See you next week.